Q-suite, Business Suite, Normal Suite, and Slightly Worse Seat. These are among the many Qatar Airways Business Class products. Most have direct aisle access, some even have doors, and they are all lie flat. Well, almost all. Good morning, guys, from the Oryx Hotel. Today, I'm about to fly Qatar Airways up to Istanbul's secondary airport, and most people would not understand the logic of me choosing this flight whatsoever, but the thing is, I've tried every Qatar Airways product that exists, except this one. So I figured today is my chance to give it a try. I'm Nonstop Dan, a half Swede and half American who's been obsessed with airplanes for as long as I can remember. Over the past seven years, I've flown 150 different airlines, virtually all self-funded. Nonstop Dan is all about trying to get as much value as possible with my miles or when those are running low, my money. And then spreading the word so you guys get optimal value and can enjoy your travels to the max. And hopefully enjoy my geeky videos along the way. The night before, Oscar and I had flown in from the Maldives after spending five nights at the St. Regis to burn some Marriott points. To fly home, there was a choice between flying at 11.20 p.m. and landing at 2 a.m. in Q Suite or departing at 8 p.m. arriving at 11 p.m. in economy class. Given that I recently earned One World Emerald status for the first time in my life, I decided to prioritize comfortable sleep in Doha, which seemed preferable to waiting around an extra three hours in Male, and what a great decision that was. Qatar economy is excellent and the crew was the best I've ever had in economy class. Shout out to Nikki and Diwam. After landing, as mentioned, I spent the night at the Oryx Hotel, the more expensive of two overnight options at Doha's Hamad airport. Around two hours before boarding, Oscar and I packed up and headed to the Al Murjan business class lounge. <laughs> The last time I visited about a month ago, I complained that it was horribly busy. I hadn't been there without the massive crowd since long before the pandemic, but I knew that today would be different given my departure during the slow hours of the day. Oh my goodness. Alert, alert, nonstop Dan obsessive rant upcoming. I had forgotten about the magic of Al Murjan. Not only is the design so stunning, but the atmosphere when the lounge is empty is just what you want in a lounge. It's expansive, peaceful, and luxurious, and at this hour, you have so many seats to choose from, you could spend your entire layover trying to decide where to sit. During peak times around midnight and at 6 to 8 a.m., this lounge is unusable. But now, it's paradise. <laughs> We hadn't had breakfast, even though the time was approaching 3 p.m. in the Maldives, so we headed up to the empty restaurant where the indulgence truly began. Naturally, everything you see here is free. From the Middle Eastern food selection, hummus, Mediterranean salad, mini falafel sandwich, amazing, look at this. To the hot foods buffet, to the salad bar, and even the sushi bar. This selection is better than many first class lounges, but that's not all. There's also a menu where you can order a la carte options and drinks. I was starving, so needless to say, nonstop Dan was nonstop eating. Hummus, sushi, vegan garlic tofu stuffed tortellini, so much good food, all served with five star service. We also had our favorite non alcoholic Qatar Airways drink, So Jenny. I'd never seen the bottle before, so when this amazing guy Pankaj brought it out, I almost choked on my teriyaki roll. Here's me eating sushi without the chewing sounds because I have misophonia, which basically means chewing sounds drive me crazy. So that's a fun fact about me. Another fun fact about me is that I'm super into investing so that one day I hopefully don't have to pay for these flights with miles. One of my investments is through today's sponsor, Masterworks, an online platform that enables you to join 250,000 other people investing in 10 to $30 million art pieces. But Dan, how is this possible? Well, Masterworks knows that wealthy people love investing and contemporary art, which is no surprise given that it's outpaced the S&P 500 by 174% 
in the past 25 years. By creating an LLC for each piece of art they purchase, and they purchase a lot, regular people like you and me can buy stakes in these art pieces and profit when they sell them. Recently, they auctioned off their first Banksy painting for a net 32% annual return. My subscribers are getting a fast pass to set up a call with a Masterworks advisor who guides you through the platform. When I had my intro call, I was so thankful to have someone to explain all the site features because now I seriously navigate like a pro. Join me investing on Masterworks at the link at the top of the description. No commitments necessary, just potentially a whole lot to gain. After enjoying Al Murjan more than I had in years, we packed up and headed down. The emptiness of the airport also let us check out some sections we've never explored before, like this massive MacBook station where people can work, or this TV area, or this playground. There's even an entirely vegan restaurant at the airport, Evergreen Organics, which is close to gate C7. We had such a fun layover here. 15 hours went too fast. Despite a largely empty airport and hence empty gates, our flight boarded from gate C20, aka a remote stand. That's not too bad when you're flying business class though, since all business class passengers and One World Elites can enjoy their own business class bus to the aircraft. It has pretty much guaranteed seats for everyone, but the big bummer is these windows that block the beautiful views of the apron. Why? We got to the aircraft in no time and soaked up a few seconds of the glorious Gulf winter weather. Anyhow, Qatar Airways has a few aircraft without lie flat seats in business class. Two A321s, which are being retired, as well as a dozen or so A320s. That means you're guaranteed the seat you're about to see if you're flying an A321, while on the A320, your odds are 50 50, so it might be best to avoid that as well. The Qatar Airways Airbus A321 comes in a pretty standard configuration with 12 business class recliners spread across three rows in a 2-2 layout. Oscar and I sat in 3D and F, but there was only one other person in business class, so we could have really sat wherever. Welcome on board! Ta-da! This is Qatar Airways' by far worst business class seat. As you can see, it's as standard as business class recliners get, and is virtually identical to the seats you'll find on Etihad's A320s, Turkish old A321s, and most US domestic first class products. If you've ever tried those, you'll know that this is still a massive upgrade from economy with plush, comfortable chairs. The seats have adjustable headrests, individual armrests, USB 3 and universal power ports, and seat pockets for days. Both armrests bear gifts, one contains the tray table and the other contains the video monitor. Needless to say, there's no fighting over the armrest here. The tray table, in the words of Oscar, is quote unquote so fancy looking. The seat controls can be found down here as well. I'll show you how much recline you get here shortly. There was an amenity and hygiene kit waiting at the seat. The former is a scaled back version offered on sub five hour flights. The hygiene kit has also been scaled back to offer single packs of hand sanitizer rather than a whole tube. You're still pretty well covered for a daytime flight here with an eye mask, socks, lip balm, gloves, a mask, and yeah, these packs of hand sanitizer. The one thing I'm missing is earbuds. Now, we may have just had food in the lounge, but as someone who lives to eat, the fun must continue on board. Sadly, eating on planes isn't always fun, but here there are plenty of options, some of which must taste good, right? The drink selection is impressive as always, and despite a wide variety of champagne, wine, tea, and juice, you'll always find me ordering lemon mint. This was served prior to takeoff after a warm welcome on board by the cabin supervisor. I had barely taken my first sip before we began pushback, but the crew let me enjoy it until we were literally lining up for takeoff, at which point they had to take it because we were about to blast out of Doha. This is your reminder to subscribe if you haven't already. It's free, takes a second, and you could win awesome prizes like this recent subscriber who just won a $100 gift card with an airline of their choice. There is no need to worry about getting thirsty on board because minutes after takeoff, the crew came around to serve my other favorite drink, the pineapple margarita. All that's missing on Qatar Airways is bubble tea, my ultimate favorite drink, but Air Asia beat them to it.
I started out the flight by checking out the entertainment system, which isn't the easiest to find, without asking the crew or having flown this product before, of course. The screen comes out like this and features Oryx 1, but it seems to be significantly scaled back, which was quite disappointing. The comedy TV show selection, which is usually where I'm drawn, was noticeably missing many of my favorites on Qatar Airways, including Bob's Burgers and Family Guy. I have the most sophisticated taste in shows, don't I? Speaking of sophisticated, this screen is giving me iPhone 3G vibes with its severe lack of responsiveness. The headphones at least are the standard ones and they're pretty great. Unfortunately, there isn't Wi-Fi on board, so working is not an alternative unless you have offline stuff to deal with, which I have plenty of. I spent a few hours getting stuff done here and there, sipping some tea and enjoying the breathtaking views of Iraq. Isn't it crazy how some countries just draw you in from above? Even though it's probably not the best idea to visit, at least these southern parts. All the mocktails eventually came calling to be released back into the world, so I headed to the lavatory. This is obviously one of the most noticeable differences from a wide-body aircraft since narrow-body lavatories are always rather claustrophobic. It was stocked full of additional amenities, which was pretty cool though. At this point, you might be wondering why I haven't shown any food yet. That's because, as on all their flights, Qatar Airways offers dine on demand, so you can eat whatever you want, whenever you want. On a flight with only one other business class passenger like this one, Oscar and I could have theoretically ordered everything off the menu, so, you know, that could have been a way to pass time. We decided to eat about an hour and a half before landing on our four hour flight since we'd eaten so much in the lounge. Right before the meal was served, I gave the seat recline a test. It's comfortable as you'd expect, but nothing like a lie flat seat. At least they offered the regular comfortable bedding. Now for the food. I've had this starter before and really dislike it, so we followed it up with another starter, the Meza, which is more my style. It's served on a beautiful plate, but it's a shame the rest of the presentation doesn't match. Next up, my main course, this stir-fried vegetable and tofu dish. Again, not the best, especially presentation-wise. I believe the crew just heats the meals in the microwave rather than plating them on these flights. Last but not least, this fruit bowl, which again, is pretty mediocre for business class. Overall, a sort of disappointing meal service despite super attentive service throughout. Soon enough, the sun was setting and I was ready to get out of here, so let me wrap up so we can all get on with our days, or you can check out my recent Qatar Airways A380 review to see how the experience should be. Am I happy I booked this worst product? Yes. Why? <laughs> because now I can officially say that I've tried every business class product that Qatar Airways offers. Would I book this again? No. Would I recommend booking this? No. However, if you happen to end up in this seat, it's certainly not the end of the world. It's still comfortable and fulfills its main purpose, namely being good to do business in. I guess that's the purpose of business class, right? Well, work and sleep, in which case this seat will be a letdown. I knew going in that this was their worst seat, so I was actually positively surprised by how comfortable it was rather than the opposite. What left me more disappointed was the lack of soft product improvements. For me personally, the cabin crew is really the most important thing. Service can absolutely make a flight for me, but that alone cannot save an otherwise mediocre experience. I understand why they can't do the full table service at the moment since it requires a lot of passenger to crew contact, but I don't see why they can't at least put candles on the tray, have maybe one or two hot or cold towels, or just a few other small touches to give us that flair. Let me put it this way, if this had been a full pre-COVID Qatar Airways experience, I would have literally sought out their worst business class seat over competitors with lie flat seats like Lufthansa or Iberia. Now, that is not the case. 
Just as a point of comparison, a few days later, I flew Turkish Airlines A321 business class from Istanbul to Gothenburg, a roughly three hour flight. Not only did they have hot towels, but the meal and its presentation were really top notch. And they offered Turkish coffee with Turkish delight. Can you imagine if Qatar Airways started serving Arabic coffee with dates on all flights rather than just within the Gulf? That would be amazing. My point is, in many ways, Turkish has a more impressive soft product than Qatar Airways at the moment, which usually is not the case. I'll report back once things change. For now, thanks as always for your love and support and bearing with my occasional negativity. As usual, this flight was self-funded so I can share the good and the bad with you guys. I appreciate you so much and until I see you next time, fly safe.